And for more on this rapidly unfolding story, we turn to Richard McGregor, a longtime correspondent in Beijing for the Financial Times and other papers, and author of The Party, The Secret World of China's Communist Rulers. And Chiao Chang, director of the Berkeley China Internet Project at UC Berkeley and editor of the China Digital Times, an online publication. Welcome to you both. So, Richard McGregor, beginning with you, what do you make of this latest bombshell that Bo Xilai's bugging system wasn't just bugging crime figures, which was the ostensible reason, but top Chinese officials? Well, it's really the latest fascinating insight into the sort of hitherto closed world of Chinese politics. And on this occasion, frankly, it's positively Nixonian, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, um, I suspect that a lot of this goes on. What is the most, one of the most remarkable aspects of a remarkable case is that, is that we're learning about it in almost real time. It often takes years for this to come out. I'm sure they bug all each, uh, each other. They all keep files of dirt on each other. Um, and it's just at, at different tipping points when they become valuable and are used. Um, but it certainly shows that's how they play the game internally, and it's very tough. And Xiao Chang, does this also suggest that the reason he's been not only stripped of power and, but humiliated is not just the murder and, and the original stories we heard? I think uh, everyone who live in China, grow China as an adult in Chinese society, or someone familiar with Chinese politics will understand. It's not because the Mr. Bush some wrongdoing, such as uh, his family member involved in a murder case, or himself and his close partners, police chief Wang Lijun, uh, involved in, in, in a wiretapping a leader, uh, causing his downfall. It is because he is being sacked He's a loser of the Chinese political struggle now. And then those dirts now coming out against him. Uh, everyone uh, for familiar with Chinese uh, authoritarian regime, a one-party closed box, dark politics will believe Mr. Bo, all these charges and, and a new uh, facts against him, probably not exception, such as his, he, his couple, this couple, the Bo's, uh, family has been secretly transferred six billion U.S. dollars uh, worth of the fund to U.S. and the British and other overseas mm -hmm. uh, banking accounts, according to, again, another Chinese official's leaking. Yeah, all of this leaking. So, uh, Richard McGregor, there have been reports on the Internet, and then I want to get back to Mr. Xiao about the Internet, too, because that's his expertise, but that actually that the Bo Xilai was actually trying to undermine the current Chinese leadership and perhaps even the presumed successor to President Hu, uh, Xi Jinping. Is, is, that, is there evidence of that? There's no direct evidence of that. I think his major crime, if you like, politically, was to campaign so publicly for a place in the inner circle of the Chinese leadership. He was a very charismatic Western-style politician. That does not sit well with other leaders because you're meant to do your business behind closed doors. Having said that, I mean, it's true they all have dirt on each other, but this is pretty exceptional. Not every top Chinese leader is involved and their, or their families are involved in murder. Uh, um, and that makes it, makes it exceptional. So he's a loser in a power struggle, but there's more to it than that, I think. Um, back to you, Mr. Xiao. You're smiling. Did you have a comment you wanted to make, or, or I was just going to ask you a... Well, a, I, I guess we don't know if other leaders, family members have involved in murder or not, right? Not until they became a loser. Mm. Well, that, that's true, but this is a, a pretty remarkable case. <laughs> I don't think we should assume they're all sort of stuffing cyanide down foreign businessmen in hotel rooms. <laughs> back to you, Mr. Xiao. True. This is because the murder involved a foreigner, a British. But here is the information of politics that, uh, 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 with the Chinese characteristics, if you want to call it. Because in a, a, demo a democratic open society, the political enemies will go after each other in the open media space. Uh, but in a closed Chinese high politics, uh, the party media is not usually uh, being used in that way that different political uh, agenda or different uh, political opponents go after each other. But in the internet age, it became the information become rumors mm -hmm. that leaked to foreign media, to Hong Kong and Taiwan newspapers, to on the internet, even to the microblogging spaces. And every side of this political struggle is trying to maneuvering the uh, informational politics, uh, uh, advancing their own agenda. 
So do you, do you agree, Richard McGregor, that even though there's much made of how they're trying to shut down, if you try to Google, or of course you can't Google anymore in China, but you try to search for Bo Xi Lai or the Gu Kai Lai, it's blocked. But that actually Chinese officials are involved in leaking all this to the Western press and getting it on the internet. Well, there's certainly much more leaking yes. than there is than usual. It, it, it's you know you can't control it like you used to be able to, and because of that, clearly some you know senior factions are using this to you know for their own ends, just like they do in in the West. I mean, I think mm -hmm. they tr but they are overall trying to close it down. But as our other guest knows better than most. That's just about impossible to do these days. So, Xiao Tiang, where is this going? Well, first of all, this is a, a biggest political uh, scandal since Tiananmen massacre, um, the last 20, almost 23 years. Uh, but it's, again, it's not such an exception if you consider the history of Chinese Communist Party since People's Republic uh, of China being funded. Almost whenever it comes to the highest power transition, almost every single time that the, the number two or the uh, original candidate or some huge political struggle will happen and someone will go down, whether it's Lin Biao or Liu Shaoqi or Zhao, uh, uh, Zhao Ziyang or Hu Yaobang. The, Ten years ago, the current president, Hu Jintao's tr term transition was actually exceptionally smooth. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we see that was only an exception. The fundamentally, inherently, instability of such a regime in terms of higher power transition is being illustrated dramatically in the internet age by Mr. Bo Xilai's case. And but Richard, here's all the other Chinese get, people will see that. And we're just about out of time, but, Go ahead. Uh, but Richard McGregor, so do you think there is a large, is this exposing a larger split between real factions or is this just one rogue party guy who got out of step and he's being put down? No, I think that's the key point. We all think, you know, China has been moving to institutionalizing how to hand over power, which communist societies are very, uh, systems are very, very bad at. They looked like they did it 10 years ago. They looked like they're able to do it again this time. This fall. Uh, this fall. But whether they can is, is a really open question. It's also the question of whether something like this will make the party close up and become less transparent than ever, or whether reformers, as we're reporting tomorrow, want to sort of, mm -hmm. You know, constitutionalize the system, make it more open, put up more candidates for the jobs, and try and sort of make it more democratic, not in the US uh, sense, of course, but generally. Well, it will be fascinating to watch. Richard McGregor and Xiao Chang, thank you both.